We look at a lot of gear, and f I've been studying the history of different camera companies for a long time and all the little nitty-gritty details. So this is going to be a nerdy video, but I just wanted to quickly go over what I think, in my opinion, the biggest mistakes that the biggest camera manufacturers have made in their like digital photography time span. Up first, the biggest one, Canon. I think their biggest mistake is a little nitpicky thing that nobody thinks about, but their APS-C bodies, like the T6i, the T6s, the 80D, the 7D Mark II, they have a 1.6x crop factor. Sony Panasonic or Sony Pentax, Nikon, every other manufacturer who makes sensors of the same size, they have a 1.5x crop factor. So what that means is Sony Nikon Pentax, their sensors are actually slightly bigger than the Canon sensors. They're about 8.6% bigger if you actually calculate the like square surface area of them. And what that means is that at any given ISO, the Canon sensor is gathering 8.6% less light. And therefore, it's going to generally have 8.6% more noise, even if they're exactly the same. The, the technology is exactly the same. So Canon is handicapping themselves by almost 9%, which is a big deal, 9%. Now, Canon sensors, the noise levels tend to be a little bit worse than the competitors anyway. I've seen that the noise levels tend to be about, comparing cameras of the same year, about 16 to 25% behind like Nikon and Sony. And so what that means is that that 8.6% is, is pretty significant. It can be about half of that difference could be made up if Canon would just make sensors of exactly the same size. This was a decision that somebody made back when Canon released, I think it was the Canon 10D, whatever their first APS-C digital body was, they decided to go with a slightly smaller sensor, probably because sensors were outrageously expensive to manufacture at the time and making it slightly smaller made it slightly less expensive and they wanted to compete on price. But then they stuck with that same format and everybody else went with that slightly bigger format, giving them just this little bit of edge. And Canon, as a result, has always been a little bit behind this whole time. So for everybody who is looking at these sensor scores and stuff, Canon always looks a little bit worse. And I, I know for a fact that it's, there's a lot of people to Sony and Nikon because people talk to me about it. They look at that stuff. Here's another factor. If you get especially a third-party lens like the amazing Sigma 18-35, uh, to 35, when you put that on a Nikon body, it's actually a little bit wider angle. And Sigma has to manufacture their lenses to cover the bigger sensor size anyway. So any sorts of third-party lenses, well, they're not designed for that smaller sensor, so you're always wasting a little bit of light. And if it's more telephoto, well, you can always crop your Nikon image down, but you can never make your Canon images a little bit wider. So that wider focal length, the, the more cropped focal length and more noise mean that this is this decision from many, many years ago continues to haunt Canon even now in a real way when people are buying their first APS-C cameras. My recommendation, Canon, start making your sensors the same size as Nikon, Sony, Pentax, Fuji, Fuji, Fuji and reclaim that benefit. I know some of your lenses might not be designed to cover the full image circle, but I bet most of them are just fine and won't show any vignetting at all. And you got to overcome it. Nikon's biggest mistake, in in my opinion, there there are a few little things like they chose not to upgrade to an all electronic mount. Like Canon shifted from their old FD mount to EOS, and that kind of gave them a benefit. Nikon decided to hold on to backwards compatibility, which was a benefit for a while, but now they're kind of stuck with this old archaic mount, and that's become caused some confusion, like the difference between AF lenses and AFS lenses. Nikon lenses are just kind of harder to shop for. People don't know whether their their body has a motor drive or not for compatibility. Anyway, that's not what I think the biggest mistake is. I think Nikon's biggest mistake is not investing in proper live view focusing. Things like on sensor phase detect focusing. So in the Canon world, you can grab a Canon 80D switch to live view, touch the screen, and it will focus quickly, smoothly, and beautifully. And this is becoming more and more and more important. Even Canon's top end bodies, all the way from the top to the bottom end of their lineup, their new cameras have this fantastic live view focusing ability. 
Nikon cameras only rely on the off-sensor phase detect for any sort of reliable focusing. So you can't be using live view. You have to be using the viewfinder to use that phase detect. And then Nikon focusing is great. But once you switch to live view, Nikon focusing is terrible. And that's going to be a big deal for a few reasons. For one, more and more people are switching from stills to video. Video is becoming ever more important, especially with the popularity of YouTube. And when you're shooting video, Nikon, Nikon focusing is appalling and frustrating. <laughs> Worse than any other manufacturer, most definitely. And I think it's because they are just so far behind. For some reason, they're just not investing in on-sensor phase detect focusing. I also foresee in the next couple of years, manufacturers, including DSLR manufacturers like Canon, integrating electronic viewfinders because electronic viewfinders have huge benefits of being able to see your current exposure when you're looking through the viewfinder. And they require the use of that on-sensor focusing. So Nikon is kind of far behind. It's not too late to catch up, but it's I've seen Canon improve their phase detect on sensor focusing over since since the 70D. So over a couple of generations of cameras, it's gotten better and better. So Nikon's going to be starting a little bit behind unless they can find a way to quickly catch up with that technology. Sony, again, it's a company that has made a few big mistakes. They also have, they have kind of a small mount, which seems to be, I'm talking about Sony E-mount here, a little bit smaller than the other mounts, which I know makes it uh, basically impossible to do a good job of adapting super wide angle lenses. You always kind of get like ugly fringing on the corners because just because of the angle that the light has to enter, it's difficult to manufacture full frame wide angle lenses for the smaller Sony E-mount. It's kind of a problem, but that's not what I think their biggest mistake is. What I think Sony's biggest mistake is, is abandoning the A-mount cameras. Sony, well, technically they still make them. They haven't officially given up yet. They they have their A-mount line, which are what they call SLT cameras. They're basically DSLRs. They have a mirror. They're, they're fat like a DSLR. They have a mirror which bounces light up to your eye, except it's a fixed semi-transparent mirror. And it's kind of like a hybrid between... Uh, DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Now, I just actually, I misspoke. I said that the SLT mirrors bounce light up to your eye. They don't. They bounce light over to a phase detect sensor, which provides for excellent focusing. Those SLT cameras actually have an electronic viewfinder, which gives you the, the best of both worlds. Um, the amazing focusing of a proper DSLR and uh, an electronic viewfinder. And they, they always work fantastically, especially for video. They just couldn't be beat for things like sports. They were absolutely wonderful. Sony's kind of abandoned that for the mirrorless, proper mirrorless mount, the E-mount, which is thinner. And I feel like they made this choice a few years back during like the heyday of mirrorless cameras, when mirrorless cameras were all the rage. This is like 2008, 2009. Everybody thought mirrorless cameras were gonna completely kill off DSLRs anytime now. That didn't happen, and it didn't happen for a really good reason. Mirrorless focusing is probably the single biggest reason. Mirrorless cameras just don't focus that well with telephoto lenses, and we they've gotten better and better. But even now, put a 400 millimeter lens on a mirrorless camera and put a 400 millimeter lens on a DSLR, and you're gonna get way better, way faster, way more reliable focusing with the SLR, especially when tracking moving subjects. And most people want to shoot at least a little bit of action, a little bit of sports, a little bit of wildlife. You could do that with the Sony A-mount cameras. But with the E-mount cameras, it's not, you could technically do it, but it not, it's not necessarily your best choice. There were features that the A-mount camera has to have that, that, that the E-mount cameras just can't have, including great continuous autofocusing with telephoto lenses. And they might never get there just because of the limitations of on-sensor phase detect. So Sony, maybe consider not completely giving up on the A-mount, though you've invested so much in E-mount, and I know you don't want to divide your energy between two mounts. Maybe it's too late. Pentax, great company. They make value-oriented cameras um, with feature sets that the other names just don't have. But I think their single biggest mistake is the Pentax K1. Now, that's a camera that we absolutely adored. I named it my favorite landscape camera of all time. But Pentax, up until the K1, had been making all APS-C bodies. All their cameras had a 1.5x crop factor, and all their lenses were designed for that 1.5x crop factor. 
By introducing a full frame camera, now they basically need an entire second set of full frame lenses. Now, it, this sort of split between APS-C cameras and full frame cameras has been around since the very first digital SLRs. Again, because sensor sizes, sensors were really expensive to manufacture, camera manufacturers kind of made this separate APS-C and separate full frame lineups and everybody wanted to upgrade from APS-C. You started on APS-C and then you upgraded to full frame, which was more expensive. And I think everybody got it in their heads that if you want to be pro, you have to get one of these full frame bodies. Now, in our own research, we found that you can get the same results with smaller sensors if you have the right lenses. Nobody would need to go to a full frame camera if we could actually manufacture great APS-C lenses. Sigma started to do that with the 18 to 35 F1.8 and the 50 to 100 F1.8. Those are APS-C lenses and they give genuinely full frame results with APS-C bodies, meaning you don't necessarily need to upgrade to full frame if you get one of those lenses. Pentax could have gone that route. They could have put taken the energy that they put into building a full frame K1 and this whole new set of lenses. They could have just made a great top end APS-C body, maybe with a higher megapixel count, like a 36 megapixel APS-C sensor, and then made great fast F1.8 lenses for it. And then they, they would have, it would have been a little bit of an uphill battle. They would have had to have proved that you could get pro results with an APS-C body, but they wouldn't have had to build an entire new full frame lens lineup. Pentax, I think you should have stuck with APS-C and just did APS-C really well because you have a great set of APS-C lenses and a really limited set of current new digital full frame lenses. Micro Four Thirds. These are cameras that mostly Olympus and Panasonic manufacture. A really brilliant design, making the lens mount itself open source so that anybody could design accessories for these cameras. What I think their biggest mistake has been is not investing in phase detect autofocus. Now, I'm talking about autofocus a lot because that's the single biggest distinguishing factor between DSLRs and mirrorless, and it's the reason we keep recommending so many uh, people buy DSLRs over mirrorless cameras because so many people really do care about fast autofocus. Almost everybody shoots some sports or some wildlife, some action of some kind. And you can take a lot of great shots with Micro Four Thirds cameras. We use them all the time. What I'm, we're recording on Micro Four Thirds cameras right now, in fact, but we do all manual focusing. And I would never pick up a Micro Four Thirds camera to do any sort of action. Um, there's really only one Micro Four Thirds camera that has any sort of phase detect autofocus, and that's the Olympus EM1. And in our testing, that phase detect autofocus paled in comparison to even other mirrorless cameras, but especially compared to even low-end DSLRs, even a low-end DSLR autofocus on continuously moving subjects much better than the top-end <laughs> Micro Four Thirds camera. And as a result, a lot of people who've entered the Micro Four Thirds world have gone out and tried to shoot action and then become frustrated with it. Maybe they've become frustrated with photography, or maybe they've just become frustrated with that particular body. Either way, it's too bad uh, because it is a technical limitation of mirrorless cameras. They, they might never autofocus as well as DSLRs with their off sensor phase detect focusing system for certain types of subjects, mind you. Um, but Micro Four Thirds, their, their lenses haven't been designed for it and none of their sensors have been designed for it. And now mm, might just be too late to ever really catch up in the action world. That about wraps it up. Just my opinions. I'd love to hear what you think of what e the biggest mistake that each camera manufacturer has made. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be irate because I said something negative about the manufacturer that you love, but I said something negative about all the manufacturers, if that helps. <laughs> and it doesn't mean you can't take great sports pictures with your Sony or with your Micro Four Thirds camera. Of course you can, but our job is to recommend cameras that provide the best value for people that will provide the best results. So it's not whether you can or can't, but it's what will get you the best shots for the amount of money you have to spend. And, and that's how we kind of make our recommendations. Give me a subscribe, share, like, thanks. Bye. Be polite.